Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this the next of my instructional or informative videos all about soft pastel. Something I get asked a lot is how to know which colours of pastel to buy and because they're pretty expensive it's important to buy colours that you'll make use of especially if you're on a budget. So in this video I'll give you lots of tips if you're just starting out and you have no idea which colours to buy first and I'll also give lots of tips to those who already have some pastels but want to know how best to expand. I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, please do subscribe here on YouTube. Also consider checking me out over on my Patreon channel where you'll find my full catalogue of real-time tutorials and lots more. So what pastel colours will you need if you're just starting out? Well, of course, this will highly depend on what subject matters you want to paint, but I'll get to that. I just wanted to mention, firstly, uh, talk a little bit about most starter sets in any medium. Most starter sets will provide you with white and then through a very basic spectrum of colour and usually finishing with black. And when that's a medium that you can mix colours easily, it's not so important to have lots of in-between shades and tints as you can mix black and white and other colours in to affect the uh, colour that you're trying to mix. But with soft pastel, it's better to have close to the colour that you need. You can layer and blend colours to a certain extent, but the more in-between tints and shades you can add to this basic spectrum, the better equipped you will be. Often my most used colours will be some of the more unusual shades and tints, which help me create light and shade convincingly. And most starter sets have few of these. And it's for this reason that many pastel brands now have different sets specifically designed for painting certain subject matters. Back in 2014, I created the Animal Pastel set for Unison Soft Colour Pastels. So if you're looking to paint animals, I obviously recommend this set. I put my years of experience in painting animals into this set, trying to include a little bit of everything for many different species. But I have a video all about that set if you'd like to see more. I'll add links in the description below. But from the people who have this set, I'm often being asked what colours they should now add. And my advice is often to start by adding some greens. This will open you up to landscapes and you might want a few greens anyway for certain subject matters like Mocha here with his big green eyes. So a few greens in any palette are always useful. So if you've got the, the basic animal set, let's add a few greens to this to see what would be good to get you going. So I'd want to get a couple of darker greens in and you're going to notice a pattern here where I choose one that's got more yellow in it so it's warmer and one that's got a bit more blue in it so it's cooler. So I'd take one of each from the dark end of the spectrum. I would do the same then with the mid-range taking one that's warm, one that's cooler. And if I were only choosing about six pastels, I would do that in the lighter end of the range as well. So one that's warmer with more yellow in it, one that's cooler, more blue in it. And if you're wondering uh, about the temperature of colours, I have another video here on YouTube all about helping you see whether something is warm or cool. But that's something you're going to hear me talk about in this video. So this would be a, a good enough little range of greens to get me going on most projects. And if it's landscape that you're going for, perhaps you'll want to add some more vibrant colours seen in nature. For example, more reds, um, perhaps vibrant pinks will become important for plant life, etc. And again, try and give yourself some darker and light options. It's always good to have a range of mids, lights and darks. And also yellows perhaps, just to add some more vibrance for the plant life. 
but perhaps seascapes are your thing, well then you're going to need more of the blue-greens. And again, you could just pick out two or three to get you started. If you're more interested in people portraits, then obviously more flesh-toned colours, um, which you'll even find some of in the animal set here when dealing with a lot of the fleshy parts on animals. So you already have got some if you've got the animal set for people portraits, as well as a good selection of hair colours. But there are many brands like Unison Pastels who have different palettes of colours to look at for inspiration. In fact, it was one of Unison's portrait palettes that got me started. So there's really no one definitive palette for everyone. You can see how important it is to know firstly what subject matter interests you most. Eventually, you would like to have a palette that can cope with any subject matter that you fancy painting. But if you're just starting out, my advice is, if you're on a budget, to prioritise. Try and choose the subject matter carefully and then go and look at some sets for inspiration for what colours might be most useful. So if you've got a good basic palette of some sort, and if you're like me and you've maybe purchased the odd crazy vibrant pastel stick along the way that you wish you could find more use for, well, what are the most useful colours to start adding to your collection? Ones that you're immediately going to find lots of uses for. Well, like I mentioned at the start, those in-between tints and shades are pretty useful. And that's why another set that I created for Unison is all about adding more values and more subtle colours which help to create light and shade. When you can, I would advise adding to your tints your mids and your darks to give more depth to your work. So I'm talking mostly about unison pastels when I'm talking about my colour selection and that's because they're my favourite pastel and I'm also one of the artists who does a lot of work with unison in creating these colour sets. But there are lots of brilliant pastel brands on the market these days and many of them have latched on to the idea of having experienced artists create their colour sets. It's an amazing idea. It's always helpful to see another artist's palette and what that would look like when you're trying to choose your own colours. And from there, the world of colour is for you to explore and add your own individuality. So a final tip for you if you're starting a pastel collection. When you buy new colours, make a note of the code name and keep a little notebook with their samples. That way you don't have to worry about losing their papers and not being able to identify them later when you want to reorder. I have some charts from Unison themselves, one here on my wall which I got in one of their bigger sets and also uh, some of their handmade colour charts which have the actual samples on there, not printed samples and then they're laminated to preserve them. So these are most useful and that's what I use. But it's always good to keep a note uh, somewhere yourself in case you mix different brands in your work and it just keeps a record of every colour that you've bought. Here on my YouTube channel though, I have lots of videos to help you with colour. The more you can learn about that, the more it will help you along on this journey. I'll add some links in the description below to those. But I hope that this short introduction to building your own palette of pastels has been helpful. If so, please do subscribe here on YouTube. Feel free to take a look around in all my other playlists. I have lots more videos like this, packed full of information, I hope. Also, do check me out on Patreon if you fancy learning from me in real time with longer tutorials. Until next time, happy pastling.